I always want whatever I'm creating to have a story. I always want whatever I'm creating to uh, be able to connect with people in many different ways. And I know, like, you're not going to be able to make everyone happy or you're not going to be able to connect with everyone. Yeah, but... I mean, that's what motel art is for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Getting tired of hearing all these noises in my head. I can't seem to make them go away. Chicken tired of Hey, welcome back to Bad Ideas Social Club. My name is Aaron McCall. And I'm Joe Madison. And this is a space for growers and showers and failures and friends. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is the 10th and final episode of season two. That's that's 20 conversations mm. so far in total. 21 if you count the test bonus episode. Yep, but yep. Uh, man, I just, I, I, I don't know how we got here. And that's I want, fucking awesome. You know what? Here's what I want. And I hear, here's what I think a lot of people that enjoy your show want. Ready? I want you to, I want to hear you say one thing you're proud of yourself for at your 21st episode. <laughs> if I can stick it with it, man, the, the, I'll, because I'll I gotta be it. honest. I gotta be honest. This is so much more work yeah, than I, I ever thought it was going to be. <laughs> no. It's, it's uh it's a, it was a whole thing, but I fucking love it. And I'm just going to stick with it. We're yeah. going to keep doing them. Now that you're at 21 episodes in, what would you tell yourself when first starting out? What's a piece of advice you would give yourself? I don't know. I think, I think probably don't get discouraged. Mm. This is a, it's fucking hard and it's fine. In the way that you've been able to produce this, but also fit it into your everyday life is maybe for me, for my perception, what's the most impressive? Oh, it doesn't fit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it okay. doesn't. I'm so okay. tired. Well, you're, you're making it look good. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, I love it. So yeah, that's cool, man. Sorry. Um, go ahead. But yeah, this time I met with Edwin Anderson. Uh, he's been putting his creative energy out there in so many different directions, but I think he's probably best known as a painter and mural artist. Um, I met Edwin a few months back uh, when I was moderating a panel for Creative Mornings with a handful of super, super talented mural artists. Um, and while it was very fun and I would love to do that kind of thing again, it's the format was very different than what we're doing here. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't really get the chance to like really dive in and kind of get to know him a little bit better. So that's what, so that's what this is. As soon as we wrapped up, I was like, dude, I didn't get enough. Please come on this thing. And that's what this episode is. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear what you would ask. Cause like mural is something you've never done. Correct. No, that scares the shit. Yeah. Out of it me. sounds scary. You know, just like the scale of it, which obviously that's what's scary about it. Oh, and it's wild. The message that can be created, that can be communicated through a mural is a really, really special thing. Yeah, man. I and mean, you know, we talked a lot about that too. We got into the weight of creating the artwork to reflect the people and the culture and the space that it's in and the, uh, importance of representation in art um, and making the most of the opportunities in front of you and the way he's overcome this sense of self-doubt to thrive in an area that he loves is fucking rad. Mm. Well, before we dive in, don't forget to follow wherever you're listening, leave a five-star review, and don't forget to tell your friends. And if you want to help support the podcast, buy a t-shirt or a hoodie or something from our Cotton Bureau store. There's a link in the episode description. And with that, here's my conversation with Edwin. I guess let me go ahead and take these glasses off with the cell phone. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this here, this is a nice setup. Throw some cameras in here. I know you don't want to yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked you this question once before when we did the Creative Mornings panel, but I want to revisit it here. I just, I can't wrap my head around what it's like to go from something like a 16 by 20 canvas to something that is massive and highly visible. Can you tell me about your first time? Ah, yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's very interesting because, I mean, even as artists, as we're working on what we've always been working on, whether it's a smaller canvas or just a notepad or a digital, you know what I mean, a digital pad or whatnot. And you know how creative and we always just creating stuff or whatnot. And then all of a sudden, like, we may get an opportunity where it's like, hey, I uh, love your work. Um, we have this particular building. We would love for you to create a mural. And I remember when the first time I heard that word, like Miro, am I ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, and honestly, everything is really like try and, trial and error. And it's really just like a uh, nosedive right into the opportunity. And honestly, being confident along the way, but not being afraid to make mistakes. 
for example, when I did my first mural, when the opportunity came in middle school, and it was part of a program. Actually, it was part of a UICA. Oh, sweet. Yeah, and... God, I miss the UICA. I know, right? This, and this was, like, before it became as big as it was. One summer, I got the opportunity to do a mural with other other creatives, you know what I mean? And we basically created this mural that is supposed to be a representation of the Reeds Lake on a wall right next to Chase in East Grand Rapids. What's most interesting is that even when I did that as a young kid, and I was probably about, like, 14, 15 at the time, maybe. I still didn't look at it as something that I wanted to do. I didn't look at it as like like a potential, oh, yo, maybe I could do this when I get older. Maybe I can do this, make a career out of this type of thing. It was just like an opportunity that came, and I was like, you know what? I would, lo- I would love to, you know what I mean? Like paint something on the wall. Why not? And luckily, we had those who, who led us through, taught us like the many different ways of how to go about it. Like when, we, when I first did it, we utilized this um, basically like the grid system, basically created a grid on, on the paper. And then we do the same grid on a wall. And then we find like those pinpoints on the wall. And then like, and we'll draw out the actual image on a wall so we can make sure that like the, the composition and, and the size uh, matches what's on a piece of paper to the wall. Learning that, that method, it, it gave me a good idea of how to do this one like years later right this yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah years later all of a sudden when again like me doing my first one and been, and doing it by myself and actually wasn't even by myself i did it with a group of kids with this piece here it was more of like a black lives matter piece it was more of a piece that uh represented um the students on, on what they felt that was going on throughout that time which was like the summer of like 2020 when you had everything going on with the many different riots throughout the the country and and because there was like no school, like kids wasn't in school, so like they're on their phones, on their phones or on social media, they're constantly seeing so much on their like on their feed every single day, and so it was like hard for them not to see what's happening. And so, being able to work with these kids, like literally, all I did was like help direct their energy or their thought process towards a particular theme or a subject, and then they just went on. Like <laughs> that's awesome, right? And they just like created uh, this very articulate concept of uh of a beautiful piece that basically was it was a storytelling piece it was a pop art theme with many different panels that divide um each of the stories but each of the stories told a particular message and so and i don't want to go like too deep into like the particular mural itself but it was just like how beautiful the kids all work together um to create this beautiful piece and then once i gathered all that information probably took like a week or so I, I probably had like a few different like sketches you know what i mean like, yeah. I'm, like I'm trying to you i'm like yo this is good wait this is good too i don't want to leave that out i gotta bring this in you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. it's those type of thing and um when i finished it and i and i uh showed it to all the students and and the faculty members and those who was help leading they loved it right away it was like this is it <laughs> type of thing and Dude. so uh and then from there it was like just the application right applying it to the wall and also too, when it comes with doing murals, all like there's gonna be different types of texture of the wall. I think for my first mural, I had the worst one possible. <laughs> yeah, what were you dealing with? <laughs> so it was like this rigid textured wall where it would probably it probably would have been so much easier just to use spray paint. But creating this mural with the students, the leaders of the program urged not to use spray paint, so we had to use like paint brushes. And so with the paint brushes, and because it's not like a smooth wall or I mean, even if it was like a little bumpy, that would have been better. But like these ridges, that was like yeah. that was going in and out, in and out type of thing. So it was super hard to try to get like a clean straight. Yeah, try line. to get something right. And I think that's another part of like being a mural, uh, a mural artist, or or, or being a, being an artist in general, or you know what I mean. Any person working in creative spaces that we have to uh, a lot of problem solving. You know what I mean. You got to be creative with how to work with what you're working with. I think another part, too, when you're working with uh, students is learning how to direct because well, it was like not only about just the concept part, but also directing on who's going to be working on what part of the wall, who's going to be working on this wall. Like, what are you good at? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? You know what I mean? And having all that organized ahead of time, because if it's just me, then I'm like, all right, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that, but it was beautiful though, because they did a beautiful ceremony afterwards. We had some students who did some speeches and did po- like a poem on it. 
Um, Incredible city. Yeah, it was it was just yeah. We had many people in the community come out and embrace this beautiful art piece that we all like we created together, and it was just like it was harmonious. Like it was beautiful. Man, what's that like to step back? Like not only just with you, but with those students and kind of take in what you've done. It feels rewarding. It feels very rewarding in regards to knowing that like we started from nothing. And now we ended with something. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah. You uh, made something. <laughs> yeah, we made something. And also one of the most beautiful parts is like the impact you can have when creating artwork, the emotions that you can bring out of people who really are in tune with the piece that is created or like they're really engaged and like having some some like their own relationship with the uh, artwork is just beautiful. And then the relationships that I built with the with the students, the kids, and then also like the community members there. I only been to Muskegon a few times, but at that time, like I was going to Muskegon like every day, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> driving back and forth every day. Like, I'm finding, I'm like, man, while I'm here, let me go ahead and uh, check out this taco spot over here. <laughs> <laughs> and man, the, the kind of vulnerability that must take, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're really kind of putting yourself out there. I think sometimes you got to be um, unapologetically you. Sometimes you got to like create things that you feel is right, or also like it's something that has a particular mission behind it. There's a goal behind it. Making sure that like the message that you are trying to convey is being received correctly by your audience. And and, and it can be sometimes intimidating and it can be uh, fearful that like sometimes some of you create may not resonate or not necessarily resonate, but like um, communicate what it is you're trying to communicate. And I think by having like a graphic communication background that did help a lot with the communication part and like the the rigorous steps of making sure that what what the sender is sending the receiver is receiving uh and so yeah it was just like a lot of trial and error <laughs> yeah well and with art too there's a lot of hit and miss there right mm-hmm. so how do you handle that kind of criticism when it slaps you in the face uh i guess it depends for the most part i don't really take things personal i just look at it from like a, a point of view in which i might not have seen myself and then it helps me become more aware of it next time there was like, for example, uh, there's a piece that I did downtown uh, here in Grand Rapids off of Wealthy and Division, and I'm not sure how I, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how I missed this. I written on a wall it says Heart Side, and it's supposed to represent the community, the neighborhood, and of course, like the mural itself as well. It has like a, a historic piece um, talks about like the black community and the popular venues in which they where they used to um, come together and you know what I mean enjoy themselves have a good time especially d- like during the uh, early 90s and mid 90s so it was like just trying to create what what the culture might have looked like for them for like a sense of entertainment how, how did they leave the world and come together and be able to have uh, this beautiful spirit but there is like this part of the wall right <laughs> I wrote heart side and I actually wrote two t's in heart <laughs> right two t's but it's so weird though because like even like when i finished it and i sent it through and uh they were like this looks great you know what i mean like and then basically like, it went through so many different um eyes before the confirmation like is completed nobody noticed it and as nobody well, notices right? until it's on the wall <laughs> exactly right? you know what i mean and so uh so uh when the picture is taken and it was posted online and they have like a, a pretty huge following of people who love art and and and, uh, and, and the murals throughout the city. And this one particular one is like, uh, or my piece. Everyone, so many people were were like roasting me. They were oh, <laughs> they were coming they were coming from my head. or like, like this guy can't spell, or this guy dyslexic, or is this like what's going on? Like what, yeah. what's happening here? Like this, the, the, it, he must love teas or something. I don't yeah. know. It was like. <laughs> Honestly, I got to tell you, I'm on your side on this because I I am so good at typos. Mm-hmm. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> As a designer, you know, you, you you don't see the words for what they are anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, they just become elements or exactly. shapes. Shapes. Exactly. You know? I was gonna and say, then, and then that's it. It's just shapes at that point. You're not even like. Uh, processing everything individually you're just trying to complete it as a whole and because of that like you're like okay this goes here this go there uh you step back take a look and 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 when you do take a look you take a look at the broad spectrum or like the like the the whole full piece versus like looking at the individual parts of it when you step in close it's easier to look at the individual parts i couldn't help but laugh i woke up one morning this will happen i woke up one morning and i had like 
four of my friends like sending two of them send it through text the other two send it through like facebook me- messenger that's, that's like, not how you want to wake up <laughs> <laughs> they're like yo they're like bro like they're coming for you they're, <laughs> they're roasting you right now like don't take it personal i'm like okay let me go ahead and see and like i mean i'm not gonna lie it was a lot of comments most of them like it was like a lot of positive like oh we love it it's beautiful um great work this and that but you know what i mean of course you're gonna have people that was always gonna like criticize or critique your work and um, I just looked at it, I was like, okay. I mean, I look at, I saw the jokes. I thought it was funny. I couldn't help but laugh. I commented, I was like, damn, you guys are right. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go ahead and fix that. You know what I mean? Uh one of the t- I mean it's an easy fix is is just like a, me just cover that extra T with yeah. just the shape of a heart. Kind of like everybody yeah. relax. I can fix this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fixable, I promise. <laughs> so you're a muralist, yeah, but not exclusively, right? Like I guess every time I introduce myself and what I do. I always start with like uh, because I have my own studio, so it's like Studio Smooth LLC. I do um, art and design, so like small small pieces of like uh, like commission, large scale paintings, murals as well. Branding, marketing. Um, it sounds like I'm just like marketing myself right now. So yeah, for yeah. those who need something, let me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did I did uh, Kalamazoo Valley Community College. I went there to have a really great design program. So, like, in the art and the media, I had, like, a lot of great faculty and professors there who they wanted to make sure, like, all the students that leave, leave prepared and ready. And also, like, the, the creative director there, he was like, hey, look, that you have the graphic design piece and, and the knowledge and an understanding. But what's going to be very important right along with that is getting a business degree as well. So you can understand the business culture, understand the business language, understand how to be able to put everything that you learn how to do put in action so that you can start creating jobs so you can start creating work for yourself. You know what I mean? Like, well, if you want to work for another person or be a freelancer, or if you want to start your own business, um, it's going to be very important for you to get that, that business degree as well. So it was very sincere and I took it to heart in, in, in a sincere way. I was like, you know what? I, I need to, you know what I mean? I, I should do this. And so that's when after there, um, after I graduated, I worked at Imperial Beverage doing a lot of graphic design work. So creating a lot of um, tap handles, uh, posters, banners, flyers, menus, promotional materials for beer, beverages, wine, spirits, stuff like that. The list goes on. But and then after that, I was like, all right. So I ended up moving back to Grand Rapids, originally where I'm from, born and raised here in Grand Rapids. And. Um, I went to Aquinas to do a major. So that's why I went for business with uh, visual arts. And again, like learning so much, so much more about like art history and getting so much, so much of the context of the art culture, um, understand so much more like uh, business ethics and stuff like that. And also by it being Aquinas and it being a private Christian school, Catholic school. <laughs> so of course you're gonna, you know, you know what I mean. There's gonna be some of your um, professors there that are looking at some things and more of a um, the morals and ethics in regards of uh, uh, the Catholic beliefs and stuff like that. Which you know what I mean. Like I'm a Christian myself, so um, much of what I was taught was already many of the things I already believed in. I'm look. I always look at things through through the lens of wanted to express love, you know what I mean? Want to make sure that like what I do, how I do it, you know what I mean? I'm always trying to impact people positively and bring a joy to others. So at what point did art and creativity become such a force in your life? I don't know why I just did that tisk. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Some, some good questions here, right here. That's interesting because I feel like I've always been inspired by my mother um, she she is I was gonna say was but she is a creative an artist an amazing artist I remember this one time she had drew this picture of my my baby sister my baby sister's probably about like a few months old at the time and she had drew this like lifelike sketch picture of my baby sister and I was like wow you know yeah. I, mean? I was like I was like that is I was like this look just like her you could have just took a picture, mom, but you, just <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? But, um, and, and then even as a kid throughout school, um, uh, from elementary on up, uh, in my art classes, I always enjoyed it. I always had like many, um, many of my peers, my friends around me were like, can you help me draw this? Can you do this for me? It was just like me being able to just 
be myself and not have to like think about being anyone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it sounds like you were raised in an environment that kind of supported that and supported the creativity. And I can kind of relate to uh, what you were saying about your mom drawing and be like, that's the coolest shit I've ever seen in my life. Uh, because my dad is something of an artist too. And, and he had this stack of, of like pencil drawings with the photo kind of taped down to the corner. Um, and I remember just going through those when I was a kid and I'm like, holy shit, this is the coolest <laughs> shit I've ever seen in my life. It was like my yeah. pops is the greatest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. And like he, he had this one of, um, Ace Freely from kiss. I actually just recently grabbed it when I went home to go see them recently. And it's just hanging up in my office. You're, you're going to go grab that. You're going to have to grab that before the end of this, yeah. uh, this, 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 yeah, this I will. talk. I will. <laughs> and it's funny. My dad dated it and I was like, holy shit. He was 17. Really? When he drew this. Wow. And I think that's also, too, a beautiful part about moments like that, right? When it feels like a time capsule. And, and sometimes and it's interesting because it has an energy with it. Like it yeah. And, and, it, and it feels like um, an ancient relic of some sort that like always hold meaning. It has yeah. like a deep, dear meaning to it. And the, the value is like, it's, it's invaluable. You know what I mean? Like when you're able to, when you see that they allow you to take it, it's like, it feels like it's passed down. You know yeah. what I mean? That was one of those pieces that I'm like, I have to have this, mm -hmm. you know, like this is, it's, it's such a, uh, for me, it was like such a moment of like, Oh, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know, At, going back to when you were telling me, like, you can tell that I have people around me that, that loves what I do and, and, and want to help like push me to keep doing what I'm doing. Like my aunt, my mom, my grandmother, many of my siblings but like it's super interesting because sometimes it hits me a whole different way it, it, like my family do really love and enjoy and appreciate what i'm doing like the the type of proud look that they have when they see the things i create or when they see the things that i'm doing for example i have like some unfinished paintings that will be lying somewhere and i'm like shoot that's about like 40 percent done i get back to you later <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean yeah. and and um, my mom or my aunt or someone might walk through the house and they look at him like i want that now you know what i mean like <laughs> i'm looking at him like but it's not even done and I'm like it's done to me i like it i want to put it in my house you know what I, mean? <laughs> I love that man that's got that feeling right yeah you know what i mean i'm like and i appreciate it. i do i do very much appreciate it but also at the same time i'm like but it's not my full potential you know what yeah, I mean? sometimes yeah. i have you feeling i'm like i want to give you an unfinished piece but sometimes like you know what i mean like those that are unfinished are finished because you know it's I mean? because at that point it's more about the connection that you've made exactly. through that than than the paint that's on the canvas right exactly you know what i mean they see something um they connect with it and i think that those are like one of the few moments that like kind of does give me the fire and I feel like, yo, E, just keep doing, you know what I mean? Like there's energy keep, there. Yeah. Literally. Was there a specific moment or experience that shaped the way you approach your artwork? Uh, all right, look, I'm going to be doing a whole lot of, uh, mm, I think, uh, and you can cut this out. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> but to, to answer that question in the best way in which I can, you know, in regards to how I'm receiving it, I think that what what helps shape the way I approach my my artwork or my pieces or that gives me inspiration. Whenever I'm like in, I'm in a space where I'm le learning something new, it motivates me or inspires me or gives me a, a whole new light to to create something I might not have ever thought before. I feel like I've found this early for myself that allowed me to be able to continuously be creative or not have those roadblocks where like I'm just like at a standstill and I can't think of anything or create anything new or anything like that and so i believe that a cure for many people who may be listening is that when you are consistently experiencing new things if you are on a journey traveling or if you meet meet new people or I, I like learning new stuff and learning the way in which how the world works around me like learning about different cultures learning about uh the, the like the, the people that work, walks on this earth game changing individuals that help create innovative technology or like methods that help push us moving forward as a human race type of thing and i feel like just moments like when i'm when i see stuff like that or when i've learned stuff like that it's just like like but ding you know what i mean i'm thinking all of a sudden like oh you know it'd be dope if i put this and this together and boom all of a sudden you got this, you know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, it's interesting. So like I, I'm, I'm on a ramble now. <laughs> That's all right. Dude. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> 
Oh man, I'm in my late thirties and I'm still learning and getting to know myself both as an artist and as a person, um, has your artwork or creativity in general, uh, played a role in your journey of self-discovery, um, personally or creatively? What? (laughs) (laughs) Are you learning anything about yourself through your artwork? There, there we go right there you know what i mean hey look you said all that <laughs> <laughs> no 100 percent. Uh, i have learned more about myself i've definitely learned more about uh why i'm creating artwork and not just create stuff just just for it to look aesthetically pleasing and me me learning more about um the why help push so much to move forward and creating like a lot a lot more meaningful work I remember one time when my professor, like, he, he'd like do like those little one on ones with the students, stuff like that, just to talk about where you are. And we we're just talking about like my performance. And, and he, he, he's like this philosophical guy. Like, everything come out of his mouth just seems just, just so wise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? He got long hair, long beard, uh, lightly gray. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's young and old at the same time. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Like when he speaks, there's this pause, and I, and I, and I think I got it from him now. <laughs> but he was like, uh, he was like, there are those who are gifted with being able to create and be and, and do well uh, moving forward, and there are those who work very hard and put so much of effort into something and still have a difficult time being able to succeed. And and he was like. And you, Edwin, <laughs> and you are one of the individuals that I could tell is effortless when you create your work, because when you create the work, it comes out like beautiful. It's, it's, uh, but what you're lacking is being able to derive something or build something with a specific concept and having a meaning behind it, because many people can create something that's very beautiful, but can it connect with anyone? that stuck with me to this day. Yeah, that kind of blows you back, doesn't it? <laughs> right, exactly. And so now bringing it to present day, I look at I look at things through the lens of like a designer, but also look at things through the lens of, of, of the individuals who are going to be viewing it as well. You know what I mean? And so I always want whatever I'm creating to have a story. I always want whatever I'm creating to uh, be able to connect with people in many different ways. And I know like you're not going to be able to make everyone happy or you're not going to be able to connect with everyone. Yeah. But... I mean, that's what motel art is for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but what many people can appreciate the most is being able to see something and, and see that there is a story behind it. People really do enjoy and love like, being able to gaze at the artwork, being able to like uh, stare at it and just wonder, you know what I mean? Because uh, yes, you can have an artist statement, which I still believe is important. It's, it's important for all artists to have an artist statement um, next to the artwork so that the viewers can understand through the lens of the artist, but also um, allowing the viewers to be able to create their own story from what they see before even seeing the artist statement. You know what I mean? I'm um, saying like, oh, this is, oh, this is what this meant. And I think that's beautiful because it allows people to be able to connect in their own way and allows the artwork to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> so how does your story and your uh, personal beliefs and views play into your artwork? I guess when it comes with like large scale murals, um, knowing what the goals are, the objective, be behind the whole project um, so that I can create something that fulfills the main duty of what the mission of the mural is or the purpose of the mural in the first place, but then also being able to create um, something that can connect with the community that the mural is going to be existing. You know what I mean? Because like when I do go to different places, I do like to like um, learn more about where I'm at, the people, just seeing like the culture in that space, because I want the artwork to be able to resonate with the people who are going to be seeing it every day. You know what I mean? Um, I might visit a city and be there just for like the project and then I'm gone. I might not ever see that. You know what I mean? I might not see it again unless I visit the city again, but the people who stay there is going to be seeing that mural. And I want, I would love for them to be able to appreciate and love and 
and feel seen or feel heard or feel represented based off of what the, the mural is portraying in the message. And then if I'm just creating something of my own, that's where I try to figure out more of my own style. Like when I'm creating my own work where, where I don't have to like, because I'm always morphing, I'm always growing. Like my style may look like this today, but it's not going to look like this. And you know what I mean? In a future type of thing. Right. I want to create something that's going to be um, noticeable or, or, or acknowledged. Or like when, it, when you see this artwork, like, oh, Edwin did this type of thing. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah, by yeah. the style, by the way in which he flick of the wrist <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with the paintbrush or the way he used the can, the, 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 the bodily motion. You could tell you could only get this this line or the stroke or this flare uh, if you're Edwin himself. You know what I yeah, mean? <laughs> yeah. I love uh, that shit. Um, and it, it's fun, though. It's super fun. Um, but I think when it comes with the inspiration, yo, I just like to the books, uh, to the to the, to the the audio, um, just history and learning more about culture, my culture, learning more about who I am, learning more about the spiritual side of myself. Many of these things is like, give me new ideas and concepts. So like, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty sure some, like someday I'm running out of ideas, but right now they're flowing <laughs> <laughs> That's right, so good. right right now. They're flowing. I'll be having so many different ideas come up and, and, and I should be writing them down, but I don't, but in my head, I'm like, man, it come back. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they don't, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I just like end up like coming up with something different. <laughs> That's cool, man. You know, this is something that you hear a lot about, uh, but I think it's important. And I fear that there's a lot of people that look like me that refuse to listen. And that's that representation fucking matters. Mm -hmm. And from taking in your artwork, I think you believe that too. Yeah. Can you speak to what that means to you? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> All right. So I have this in one example, right? So there, I had this opportunity to do a mural over in the Southeast side of town uh, and in the neighborhood in which I grew up in, right off of uh, Prospect Street. The closest intersection would be the um, uh, Hall of Madison off of the Link Up building. And so I had created this piece that was called Father Love, right? And the concept behind Father Love was to create a representation of black fathers um, in a black community who are present among their, um, their children, you know what I mean? And allowing them to be able to be seen because there are a lack of um, recognition on those who are present and also like, and, and them being who they are as like an amazing fathers. The social media is just like doing a lot of like spit pudding of just like the negatives of our community and sure. just, just so much to the point where sometimes like just like the, the beautiful things that, that are present are not being seen. And so um, I wanted to create this piece where basically you have uh, – Two images, you have a father and a daughter and a father and a, and a son. One was like brown, di many different shades of brown, and the other was many different shades of blue. And it came out very beautiful. It came out um, joyful because the way in which, by it being a portrait of faces, right? So it was the faces of the father and son and the father and daughter. And seeing the joys in her face, the smiles, you know what I mean? Like the, the daughter just like closely hugging her her father, you know what I mean? And the son and the dad is like joyfully smiling and laughing um, together. And literally as like I'm working on this particular piece, multiple times out of the week, I would have young kids walk up towards the mural, either mirror to the mural and take pictures of them smiling um, doing selfies next to it. And, it, and it's, it's like, this is like before it was even finished. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, and uh, I have like, like the kids just tell me how much they love it. You know what I mean? Like uh, a couple of them like that look like me, you know what I mean? Type of thing. And it's just like, the, just the joy of how much it brings to many of these, uh, to the youth, to the children. When I finished it, I had so many fathers come up to me and tell me how much they appreciate that piece. As I'm working on it, there'd be like people that pull up or like stop in the middle of the street. I'm like, I love it. Thank you. You dude, know what I mean? Dude, you got like people that. stopping to just yeah, take yes. it in. What, like, what does that feel like? What does that do to your heart? Um, yo, it brings a lot of joy to my heart. And one of the biggest things I want to do while I'm on this planet is bring joy, joy to others. And, and me knowing that like, like by my artwork, I'm bringing joy and happiness to others is just making me feel like, 
yo e you you may have to continue to keep doing what you're doing you know what i mean like uh this is this is this may be your calling or keep just keep it up you're you're, you're growing you're learning you're understanding more of what's going on what your experiences and right now uh many people many people who look like you and many people who appreciate and respect you for who you are want you to keep doing this work and so i'm here i'm like okay i'm going to keep doing it there was uh, a group of dads probably about like 14 of them all came to the mural and took like a picture oh. in front of that mural together you know what i mean and again it was like and that's representation right they, they don't get rewarded for being a good dad you know what i mean like this is what you're supposed to do type of thing and so them being able to have that moment where like wow like somebody I, sees so, me. somebody sees me so that's why i believe that like representation matters whether if it's uh by the by the by the color of your skin, by the, you know what I mean? By who you are and, and your, your gender or like by, uh, um, um, like, I guess being seen for, by just for who you are, for who you are more than that though. Um, this is like parts of the way in which my brain work is that sometimes I can't always fill the void with certain words right away. That's all right, and, man. And That's I, what the paint's yeah. for. I know, right? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> like uh, I just get lost in the sauce, and yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's it's so weird. Like, all right, um, we we are we are people who who wants to be seen for who we are, and who you are is being expressed visually on a wall for you to see and many other people to see every day. It's uh, like validation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yep, one hundred percent. It's an affirmation too. You know what I mean? It. Like what you are doing is right and you need to keep doing it. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like who you are is right too. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I agree. I agree. You want to go topic hopping? Let's go ahead and go topic hopping. When you're gone, what do you want people to say about you? I want people to, uh, to understand. I want people to say that like, oh, he's still here with us. You know what I mean? Spiritually, like I'm, I'm one of, I'm a very spiritual individual. I do talk a lot about, you know what I mean? Even like, like my grandmother, great grandmother who just passed a couple years ago. Like I know she's still here with me all the time. And like, if they speak about me or I speak about her, I speak about her and like the present tense at times too. You know what I mean? Like how much of an amazing woman and how much she's helped me grown, what she is currently doing for me today type of thing. Like, it's just like one of those things um, that I think is beautiful. And then like, I want people to talk about me uh, them knowing I'm still here, but also me wanting to bring so much joy and happiness to many other people. You know what I mean? My my willingness to just like grow and learn, bro. Like it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, bro, that's an interesting question. I don't even think about stuff like that. What do you want people to think of you going? I don't know. I want them to think about me being here right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Finish the thought. Creativity requires growth. What would your last meal be? gourmet noodles and then i love like because first of all, i love like my veggies you know what i mean like how much like veg vegetables is in, in the noodles uh they got like, the broth is amazing i don't eat pork so same chicken give me some chicken broth you know what i mean but it's pretty tough trying to find <laughs> you, know what I mean? Try to, you know what i mean so uh even even at home i, I get creative with like putting stuff together in mind you know, i'm like i'll put um carrots celery um some spices uh, I mean, even I throw some sriracha sauce in there too. Yeah. Okay, literally, um, zucchini. Um, give me a second. I got more vegetables coming. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your turn. You know what I mean? <laughs> your turn. What, what, is, what is your last meal? What is it? Oh, it's just a shitty cheese pizza. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> All right. Uh, how 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 shitty is it? You know what I mean? Like, where's, it doesn't where's even matter, man. Even the shittiest cheese pizza is great. <laughs> is it, all right, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't you know, know about what? that Actually, one. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna back that up. I'm gonna back that up. I just had little Check Caesars. cheese pizza. I just had little Caesars the other night for the first time in like a while, and I had it two days later. Mm -hmm. Not great. First off, <laughs> you know how they changed Ch Chucky? Like, yeah, Chucky he's cuter now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good thing. Like, I guess when we were kids, we he was really a full didn't. On rat. Yeah, he was a whole <laughs> rat. Oh man, bro. That's uh, what's the best advice you've ever received? Wisdom is having knowledge and knowing how to use it. I was in the mall. I was walking the mall, and um, I ended up walking past, or I was getting ready to walk past this older gentleman, and he, you could tell, like, he was just content, happy, just peaceful, like, in his own space. He's just sitting down in the middle of the mall, you know what I mean, like, where you just sit, like, those little yeah, uh, yeah. lounging areas. I don't know. It's, maybe it's just my energy. It's just who I am, but 
I'm a, I feel like I'm an approachable person, but he was like, young fella. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I'm like, I turned, who, who me? <laughs> he was like, how are you doing? You know what I mean? And basically just like started a conversation. And I was like young 20s at the time, um, probably like 21. And I do appreciate having these conversations actually because I always look to – um, visiting my great granny or my grandmother or grandfather, you know what I mean, like uh, like talking to yeah. like like um, older individuals to be able to learn more about life, right? Um, and, and also try not to make mistakes that others have already learned from, type of thing. And um, yeah, like having this conversation with this older gentleman, and we were just like we were just chatting, and it was it was going great. I'm like, I feel like this man was my granddad, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I, I feel like he was an uncle or something, just by the way in which how organically. Um, everything was flowing and we just connected well he was like you, you ever had like what you ever had like a friend that really smart kid get a's and b's you know what i mean like like very like known to be very articulate and this and that just like but just never really like make the best decisions oh, yeah. you know what i mean like they have the, they have the answers but they just don't make the best decisions and that's when like wisdom or being wise come in a lot like shows growth uh it shows like um like you understand you really un- truly understand the information that is given and how to utilize the information that is given. And when he told me that, I mean, that's deep. What's the worst? Why not? Everybody else is doing it. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's the worst, but also, I mean, depending on the scenario, it could be fun and it could be horrible. <laughs> Literally, yeah. it could be, but it, yeah, probably, yeah, I'd probably say that would be like the worst. I mean, I, I don't tend to like really like, follow along other people you know what i mean yeah I, I don't really go with the flow dead fishes go with the flow um i'd rather be the one in the boat <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know what i mean knowing what you know now what advice would you give to yourself just starting out i would tell him to just do it wise words from shia labeouf just do it you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, have you seen yeah. that ted talk he did yo like but it's crazy because like once literally once i actually understood you can build something or you can like like plan something right and still don't even execute it when you realize that like the easiest part is i mean i want to say the easiest part it's just the process and like and when you just really just do what you say you want to do when you put your mind to it and just like really like move your legs like get like yeah get up off the chair and start walking forward uh towards the path of like doing what it is you want to do you start realizing that's a whole lot easier than you actually think it is just the just the the thought of not knowing what's going to come it creates fear and that's why like many of us like don't act on many of the stuff that we want to do but if i could tell myself at, at like at a, like at a younger age i'd be like yo e listen create that plan that you said you've been wanting to do Plan it out, organize it, and do it. There are going to be doors that opens up along the journey. Doors that like you don't even you you don't even think about or not even in your in your in your in your sight at all. But as you're moving in a direction, you start to meet people, you start to find yourself in, in different spaces, you start to uh experience new things and then and, and acquire new information or knowledge or you know, you start learning as you're moving forward. And when you do, it's just the way the, the universe works, like as, you, as you're actively moving towards that direction. Um, and then also you've got to believe in yourself, you know what I mean? Because um, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will and love yourself. What's the worst idea that you've ever followed through with? All right. I, I guess I can say this, this one, just because I can think of it. But I had surgery on my Achilles, right? Because um, I ended so I, ended, I ruptured my Achilles had surgery so they reattached it and during the healing process uh i was in a scooter and as i'm in a scooter um i didn't have my boot on at this particular time uh and it was supposed to be like a a quick little journey right there and back type of thing and i'm back down you know what i mean that's the reason why i didn't put my boot back on right putting on the boot is a whole process bro i go outside and i start scooting through the grass I thought I assessed the param- I thought I assessed the parameter very well. I did not. Apparently, I did not because as I kept going forward, there was a hole I did not see, bro. There was a hole I did not see. I rolled right into that hole, bro. I tipped over. Yo, when I tell you, when I fell and fell on my foot, that I tore my Achilles with, and all I heard was like, <laughs> I was like, no, 
<laughs> like, <laughs> yo, you know what I mean? Like it was painful, but also uh I was hurt because I was like, what if I think I re like retore yeah, my it's like, uh, I didn't Achilles. undo. <laughs> exactly. Literally, it was it was, you know what I mean? Like command Z. <laughs> yeah. Um it was loud, like I'm I'm just like I'm on the ground, I'm like, bro, come on. Come on, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. sometimes I, I, I talk to myself a lot. I don't know if you do. Uh, I, I talk. I talk to myself all the time. Um, actually, like, and this is a whole side now. Actually, I have like a whole delegation of like Edwin's in my brain. And like, whenever there's a specific topic, like I, I walk through the door and come to this table. I'm like, all right, E, E, E number two, E three. Yeah. <laughs> We're at E seven. That he's supposed to be here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then like. Throw a whole, like a file that has like a con uh, topic. I'm like, all right, let's discuss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like literally, that, that's how my brain works. And we just started talking with multiple different point of views, and and the whole delegation was like, we told you not to do it. <laughs> Everybody was like, we all got together and decided this is a bad idea, right? And you did it anyways. <laughs> told you, but look now you now you got to learn and, re- and and see from your decisions. Uh, what the uh, uh, what the results going to be? And literally, like um, uh, my girlfriend Latricia, she came in. I'm just sitting down, I'm just like, because I'm really at this at this point, I'm just like disappointed myself. Like it was one of those disappointment, like upsets. And she, she came out of nowhere, like two shots of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I look. This at is it. how you fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I look. I approve. <laughs> what are you watching or listening to right now? Oh, all right. So what I'm watching right now is uh, what's it called? Like the downfall of the Usher or House of Dude, the Ushers? Fall of the House fall, of Usher. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm watching that I right now. It. Yo, I that, finished it. It's amazing. Did you, did you finish it? I think yeah. I got like one or two episodes left. Man, listen, like like that show is like freakishly fucked up, but good at but the so same good. time. You know what I mean? Like literally, it's like it just gets better each episode and like each stuff that happens. And I, and I love like um I like um like suspense thrillers mysteries it's just like so like creatively well put together what's your favorite thing thing yeah anything um thinking um is is it's one of my favorite things i feel like like it's not a waste of time also being being comfortable with knowing how to think you know what i mean learning how to think for yourself and not you know what i mean like not easily influenced me being able to have my own process and method the way that way the way in which i can derive or uh come to a conclusion on a, on a thought i don't know like I, I just like thinking but the only problem about me like liking to think is that i have so many so many things going through my mind but i'm not able to get the words out as fast as my brain you know as, yeah. as fast as my brain process it and many times i know what i'm trying to say but i just can't say it because i can't get the word i can't get the right word yeah there to like to to help like secure the sentence <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and again that's what the paint's for <laughs> exactly, exactly you know what i mean so um yeah bro thank you you, you should do it more <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to feel about that <laughs> <laughs> do you have any regrets no not to sound like i'm perfect but i feel like everything that you are today is based off the decision that you've made in your past um and everything is a learning process so you learn from those mistakes and to regret it wishing it never happened then i mean what are you, you robbing you, yourself you would, of yeah so okay there we go boom i i regret days where i don't <laughs> 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 days where i feel like i let the day go by not doing what i should be doing days like that i feel like i feel like i defeated myself as of this moment are you okay? I'm great. Fucking love that. Yes. How about yourself at this very moment? Dude, I feel good. You feel good? I feel good, man. Know, we just I... had a great conversation. We laughed a lot. Seriously, I feel great. Man, this is like, like, I feel the energy and the energy is great. Dude, Don't... I love it. Thank you so much for, for, uh, for being a part of this thing. Before we go, where can people find you? For those who like to follow me, my name is Edwin Anderson. My, my Instagram page is uh, Studio Smooth. Uh, personal account is Smooth Gentleman. You can follow me there. Also, you know, you can follow me on um, Facebook if you'd like to follow me. Just to, you know, hey, what's what's this guy doing? What he's up to? You're gonna catch me on there doing a lot of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. Thanks again for being part of this thing. And uh, hey, I uh, appreciate you having me today. Um, very honored. Um, I do appreciate what you're doing here with with your podcast, with your show. 
being able to bring light to the many people in the city for the talents that they bring. And yo, like you're an amazing guy yourself. Well, you're a sweetheart. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then this is me signing out. Yeah, let's get out of here. I specifically appreciate the way he views the world, like the way he describes things in such an emotional detail. I don't know if that comes from like his upbringing or if he, if he's had to really like cultivate that within himself or right. if it's just a byproduct of what he does day to day. He just looks at things in such an interesting way and then translates that into something visual. Yeah. That's a powerful skill. Yeah. And like, I, I will likely never paint a mural. Right. It, it, it is, it is ah, fuck it. Maybe I will. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, but, I wouldn't put it past you, but just the, the scale of the thing and the visibility of it, there's a, um, an aspect of like permanence yeah. to that. There's a lot of times when like, maybe I look back on it three, four, five, six months later yeah. and I'm like, Oh, I would have done this differently, but you can't really do that. <laughs> well, you kind of can though. Edwin's story about adding an additional T kind of went back and like fix that up and whatnot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do think there's a, a little bit of a leeway in that and like making adjustments, but on that same note, that might be exactly why it'd be cool for you to do it. It'd be a really cool practice. And you know what? I did this thing. Here's what I was thinking when I did it. And even though I'm slightly different now, I can be proud that that thing is there and it's going to be there for a while. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but like I I know we're discussing this as as a couple of cis straight white guys. Um and in a lot of ways, um when it comes to uh the idea of representation in art and in media and in culture and things, um our role is to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Uh listen. Yeah. And try to learn something. Yeah. But I think our voices are still valid to some degree mm. in that they show support, empathy, allyship. Like, I know what it feels like to see myself reflected in art and in media. Yeah. And when you really digest it, it's a feeling that you can't really compare to a lot of things. Right. And I, you know, I think everyone should be able to feel that. Yeah. And even wider, I think people that look like us, and it's not everybody, mm -hmm. um, need to get their heads out of their asses and stop worrying about if the little mermaid is black or not. Yeah. Um, because you don't actually care. You're just being a fucking asshole. Yeah. And, you know, maybe start appreciating the vibrancy of the world around us. Yeah. I can say as a father of a three-year-old, I want her to see as much diversity in her world and her immediate vicinity as possible. I, I, I think every opportunity we have for that, we have to take it. But yeah, shut the fuck up and open your eyes and take in some art that maybe you're not familiar with. Take in some fucking uh, different perspectives that, I mean, you're only going to be better for it. And on a slightly different note, I think I think one thing he said that's really sticking with me is how much his family and his friends are helping to lift him up. Yeah. Like he's 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 got this fucking incredible support system that, you know, you can just you can just see it on him in the way that like, I mean, I know there's that that there's no video here and you couldn't really see his face. But like when he was mm -hmm. talking about his family and his and his mother and his grandmother and stuff, the the, the dude lit up. You could it, feel it. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't there for the conversation. I could feel it. And he recognizes that and he, and it, and it seems to energize him. Um, and I think that's, I think that's probably like a really special thing Yeah, and it's invaluable. Yeah. And well, that's, uh, that's season two, dude. Mm. How's that feel? It, uh, bittersweet, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, like I said, I fucking love this thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, you need a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I am excited to share that we've already begun work on season three. That's going to hit this spring, uh, probably early spring. We don't have an exact date yet, but uh, I don't know. Joe, you coming back, Bob? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, Joe will we'll be see. There. He'll be there. <laughs> He'll be here. I bought him a microphone. I would have <laughs> I wouldn't miss it. Yeah, you could probably expect a few, uh, a few bonus episodes between now and season three. But, um, I mean, until then, I'll see you later, babies. Getting tired of hearing all these noises.